Hey gearheads and welcome to Garage Shock. I'm Corey and that is the future of the Lexus brand. That is the 2023 Lexus RZ 450E in the luxury trim. This is the brand's first all electric vehicle. And for a brand pledging to go all electric in the very near future, is this thing a home run or a swing and a miss? Stay tuned. All right, gearheads, before we get too far into this one, I do want to thank Lexus for bringing this beautiful vehicle uh, here for us to test for a full week for you here on this channel. But big news, we are starting a completely separate channel called GT Premium Reviews. I'll link that down in the description below where we feature high-end vehicles with high-end footage. So if you want to see this gorgeous, vehicle inside and out in full cinematic glory, be sure and check out our new channel, GT Premium Reviews, and give us a subscribe there as well. But since I've got the hood open with a prop rod, I can go ahead and talk about what is underneath the hood, and it's not a gas engine. Yes, this is the first fully electric Lexus product, and there are some shortcomings, but we'll get to that here in a little bit. That is not a gas engine. This is actually a dual motor electric vehicle. And the noise you are hearing right now is actually the AC compressor because yes, it is triple digits out here today. And I need a cool place to rest in between uh, different takes uh, while shooting this video. But yes, nothing major underneath here. No front trunk, no anything like that. Sure, they could have given us some storage like one of its main competitors in the Genesis GV70, but even that is a little bit lacking in its own right. Closing the hood, we can really truly appreciate the style of this vehicle. It has a very bold and distinct look that is very clearly Lexus, while also being very clearly an electric vehicle because, well, there is no grill, so to speak, up front here. We do have a little bit of air uh, intake for the air conditioner and to help cool the batteries underneath that big body colored panel under the Lexus logo. That Lexus logo is actually illuminated at night and when the vehicle is charging. So that's a pretty cool look in and of itself. We've got LED check mark running lights, LED headlights, LED running lights, all of that good stuff, LED turn signals, a very cool look. But coming around to the profile of this, I feel it merits warning that this is actually a product that is shared between three different brands. So this is badge engineering at its finest, in my opinion, because the two other vehicles that share a lot of components with this vehicle Toyota BZ4X, of course, and the new Subaru Solterra EV. So this is the first electric vehicle platform for three different automakers here in the United States, Lexus, Toyota, and Subaru. We've tested both the Toyota and the Subaru version here on the channel, and this one is hands down my favorite of the bunch. It is the best looking of the bunch. It is the most cohesive design of the bunch. And I would say that it seems to me that Lexus had a majority of the pool and say so when it came to the design direction of this shared platform between the three vehicles, because this one looks most like a Lexus uh, while also being very distinctly EV. It is a very unique look. I absolutely love it in this beautiful blue color that the company calls Ether. So yes, it is a cool ice blue. It really stands out on the roads here in East Texas. I absolutely love it. And there are some shots online where you can get a blacked out grill that extends up the hood and up the roof. I really like it here. It would be interesting to see it in this Ether color uh, with that black accent running up the front of it but it is a very cool look here in this one coming to the wheels and tires given that this is a luxury version it gets the 20 inch wheels and tires which hampers the electric range and well let's just get into it so we just had the hood open 
But uh, let's talk power figures on this vehicle. It is powered by a 71.4 kilowatt hour battery, which its main rival, the electrified GV70, which is kind of a turducken of a vehicle. It is fully electric and shares a body with the gas powered version, but nothing else really. That GV70 rides on a 77.4 kilowatt hour uh, skateboard platform with its dual electric motors. Here in the Lexus, we get 308 horsepower and 320.7 pound-feet of torque split between those front and rear, rear motors. That pales in comparison to that electrified GV70's 429 horsepower and 516 pound-feet of torque. Though the GV70 also had a boost button that would give you up to 483 horsepower for 10 seconds at a time. So when it comes to a performance luxury vehicle in this price, uh, price and size class, the electrified GV70 definitely outpunches this uh, when it comes to power and overall performance. Uh, the zero to 60 time is claimed by Lexus at five seconds flat, which for me at my age, uh, I remember when Camaros and the muscle car wars were in that five second range. The GV70 though does it in 3.8 seconds. So yeah, there's a little bit of difference there. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and come around here to the charge port on this one because it is perhaps the first swing and a miss of this vehicle. And that is just the electric capability on it. Toyota and Lexus at the time of this recording are one of the last automakers who have not jumped on board and committed to going from this J1772 and CCS plug to the new North America charging standard or NAX charging plug, AKA Tesla's charging plug. So for at least the foreseeable future for right now, as I record this at the end of July, uh, we're gonna be using this old style plug, the J1772 for home charging and the CCS plug uh, for DC fast charging. The Genesis GV70 is also built on the eGMP platform, which is an 800 volt architecture and can charge really fast uh, when at DC fast chargers. This one is not. So this one is rather slow to charge and does not have that impressive of a range. Uh, because we have the 20 inch wheels on this one, we are limited to under 200 miles of range at 196 when all conditions are right. I mentioned earlier, it is triple temperatures out here today. Literally, no exaggeration. And the highest I have seen is in the 170s on this particular vehicle. But I do want to continue on style. So we do get these black wheel arches uh, because this is an SUV, a crossover. So to give some ruggedness and also to help project a little bit of height to this uh, to show some separation from the ground a little bit. We do get these awesome dark uh, polished uh, wheels. They're 20 inch wheels wrapped in Dunlop Sport SP Max uh, tires. They are rather big tires and rather wide. It looks like we've got two 3550 R20s here on this one. So yes, the 20 inch wheels over the standard 18 do decrease your range considerably, but they look so good, especially here with this um, light ice blue paint job on it. Coming around to the profile, I really appreciate what Lexus is doing here. It is very distinctly a Lexus product uh, from this rear quarter uh, glass right here that very clearly calls into mind the current Lexus RX SUV, which is the brand's best seller. But overall, it just gives very strong Lexus vibes. My favorite thing about it is just how this front fender line that comes up over the front keeps going all the way back into the back, but kind of fades into 
obscurity as we get this body line here that comes down to the front wheel arch as well and culminates in this kink right here behind the back door. And then we get a sloping rear line back here to the back. I would say this rear three quarter angle is my favorite view of this vehicle. Uh, because it shows that kind of tapered design of the entire vehicle. It shows off that design kink there on the side. And even as we come around here, you can just see all the different uh, design lines and the way the light pools and all of the design angles uh, leading up to that. I, I think it is a really upscale, classy look for this electrified Lexus. And then this back end, she got some chunk to her, but uh, it is a very good looking rear end to the vehicle. It makes it look like it's got really wide, aggressive, muscular hips and that it can really put the power down, which it can. Uh, Lexus has been known to drop the L logo from the back on recent models and give you Lexus spelled out here in the back. I think it works very well in this. And yes, I've left the vehicle running and it is decided that it is sat here too long. So I wanna pop in and uh, turn it back on, give you a little sneak peek of what it looks like here inside. Turn the vehicle back on uh, and show you what those LED lights look like back in the back. I'm even gonna put the hazards on to give you a full look at the uh, blinkers. So you can see full LED lighting situation back here as well. You've got that LED light bar that runs all the way across the back. Very slim lighting signature, but they are very bright lights uh, back here on the back. We do get these uh, fake vents back here but it just gives some visual distinction to the back so i won't give it too big of a, a knock there on that one and then much like the other two suvs on this platform we get these kind of flying buttress spoiler wings back on the back that just give it an air of speed and uh, fastness when sitting still we do have an electronically opening rear hatch that does have a flexible uh, sunshade back here in the back. It's a butterfly method and a very large cargo area back here. We do have a 60-40 split bench second row of seats with top tethers at all three spots. We'll talk more about that a little bit later and in our family review we did do get a carpeted floor mat with the Lexus logo in it which hides the handle to get to the underfloor storage. This is where our charge cable is. But you can see all of this does have uh, kind of a carpeted felt-like material on it. So if you put anything down here, it's not gonna rattle or make a lot of noise. We do have some hidden storage compartments here on the sides as well. Very good use of storage back here in the back in lieu of having a front trunk up in the front. You can get a lot of storage back here. We also have, you may be wondering what this is right here. This is the cargo net in a little leather zipped bag. So you don't just have a net all willy nilly back here, but you can see we've got places to connect it there and up here so you can store some stuff back here. And then we've got some power back here as well. So just a few things um, to uh, help power a tailgate if that's what you wanna do here in the Lexus RZ. We'll say I am five foot 10 and this hatch opens about six foot tall. The buttons to open and close it are actually up here. So vertically challenged people may wanna use the key to open and close them. Before we get inside this one, I did wanna go ahead and show you the key. It is a typical Lexus proximity key. You have lock, unlock, your hatch button and a panic button on it, but you don't really need the key because you can just keep it in your pocket. It is very slim and can slide in there, pocket, purse, wherever you keep it. Because it is a fully proximity key, you can just come touch on the back of the door that opens the, uh, the out, it folds the mirror and unlocks the door and you can pop in just like that. You can lock it by pressing that line right there. And this system is on all four doors, not just the front. So if you need to get your kid in first, you can absolutely do that. Or if the kid is the last one out, uh, they can lock it on their way. But I do want to call out these door handles do not move. There's an electronic touchpad on the back that electronically pops this door open, revealing the most 
lovely interior. This again is a opportunity for me to remind you that we have started a second channel, GT Premium Reviews, where the review on this particular vehicle focuses very heavily on the beauty of this interior and shows it in full cinematic quality. So if you haven't yet, go give that channel a follow. Again, links to that down in the description below. But I do wanna call out the door panel here before we get inside. You have a auto button for your power mirrors. You can power fold them, you can control their view, your lock and unlock, and your window controls. All four windows are expressed up and down and you do get a lockout. Pulling back away from those buttons, you can see that blue suede, ultra suede, is continued here on the door. We get this cream colored. This is injection molded plastic, but this feels like real leather or uh, synthetic leather with some stitching down here. It is very soft and nicely padded. This is how you get out of the vehicle from the inside. You simply push on that right there and it electronically pops the door open. You do get a little storage down here, including what looks to be a bottle holder. That's where we keep that ba go bag of stuff for us. We do have a multi-position driver's seat up here with your lumbar and then yes, blue suede, ultra suede seats. These are very gorgeous. Uh, it just looks wonderful when you open the door and look inside this vehicle. But I'm going to go ahead and get out of the 100 degree temperatures and away from some of the noise out there. Put my foot on the brake, push the power button, fire this thing up and show you what it's like in the newest Lexus. So you can see very large uh, infotainment display here, 14 inches, uh, digital gauge cluster here in front of me. We do have a head up display as well. A lot of information here in front of me uh, at my fingertips. So we're actually gonna start over here over my left knee and work my way across. Three position memory driver seat. So multiple people can drive this vehicle and find that supreme comfortable spot for them. We also have a tilt telescoping steering wheel and uh, all the mirror controls are all tied into that as well. Your odometer controls and trip brightness are, con are your brightness controls are right here for your gauge cluster. And then we've got rather high mounted AC vents going across the front. Do a good job of keeping you cool. I have not been hot in this vehicle for the time we've had it. And you can see we are currently at 100 degrees outside. Here is your hatch release button. And even though people probably aren't gonna need to get under the hood very much, so you can pop the hood right there. Pulling back and looking at the steering wheel. This is the softest steering wheel. Just the material wrapping it is soft and then it's got a nice cush to it. It's very nice, very easy to hold, uh, very comfortable to hold as well. And uh, one of the best steering wheels we've sampled lately, with one exception, one of the other swings and misses for me are the buttons here. You can see they're not labeled with anything and you've got two page buttons right here. When you place your finger over top of them, you get a display here in the head up display telling you exactly what those buttons do. And you can see only two of them actually do something right now, but I could hit this page button down below and now it allows me to power through different things here on the display and to move the head up display up and down. That's here on the right, the left side. These are all my media controls and then I can hit this button and go forward and back. So some more media controls uh, there on the left side of the steering wheel. I think it's overcomplicating it just a little bit. And even if you know that this button right here is track forward, you'd be better to hit track forward over here on the massive Apple CarPlay screen. This thing is so large, so gorgeous. Uh, and Toyota and Lexus have ditched the trackpad in their premium products. So there is no trackpad interface. This is fully a touch interface using Toyota's new in-house built infotainment system. Can go ahead and show that to you right here. Uh, designed completely in-house by the Toyota team. There is no home screen on this one. So you just get to page through all of these different options here on the side, including, yes, drive modes. Um, because 
Again, there is no dedicated home screen, but I guess they figure most people are gonna be using CarPlay or Android Auto, of which you have wired or wireless options in here via these USB-C ports up front. Yes, all USB-C in this vehicle, or uh, the wireless option uses the Wi-Fi on board. All of your ventilation controls are down here. They are also on the touchscreen display. I absolutely love that you can set the heat and ventilated seats to automatic. So based on the temperature outside and what you have the climate set to here on the dual zone climate controls inside, your seat will automatically start cooling for you. And these ventilated seats work magnificently. Uh, you can't go into a full climate menu here or you can go into shortcuts here. You've got have all your frequently used buttons over here, your comfort and convenience, head up display, your drive modes. Uh, and yes, there is a range drive mode for if you are really trying to hypermile this. So you have that there as well. But otherwise, this is generally how I see the vehicle and how I use it. This does have a self parking feature and then has Toyota's camera system, but I'm not gonna push that button to show you the camera system because it does this weird pan around the vehicle. I'm actually gonna put it in reverse and show you the bird's eye 360 and all the good cameras, both forward and rear in this one. This has Lexus's invisible car feature. So the cameras remember uh, what the vehicle has seen and is driving over and you can see it completely uh, makes my vehicle invisible because it knows exactly what's underneath me right now. So that is absolutely a sweet feature here in the Lexus RZ. It even works uh, when backing up. So again, really helps you know what is around you, where you are, and what to look out for is a really cool feature. But if you sit still too long, that vehicle does fill in. The uh, vehicle forgets uh, what is underneath you. You do get all these trajectory lines and you can hear, yes, there's some beeping. This thing beeps for everything. It has a beep for every radar sensor around the vehicle. So you should know after owning this for a while exactly where uh, the beeping correlates to something being near you. Another miss for me in this vehicle is the material used here in the center console. It is meant to look like wood, but it feels and sounds and looks very plasticky. I, I wish they would have used some other synthetic material here uh, that looked either metallic or something, not wood, or actually used real wood because this just unfortunately brings it down a notch for me here in this otherwise beautifully crafted interior. Even get this not nice soft cream accents here on the sides. It's just very plasticky here in the middle. We do get a Qi wireless charger up front here, and then your drive mode selector. So I already showed you earlier, uh, but I'll show you again. It is much like the two vehicles on the shared platform with this one. You push down on the ring for neutral, uh, right for drive, left for reverse, and then push button for park. Rather nice, it is a metallic versus the other brand's plastic. And then we have this gloss black plastic here, but it's rather minimal. So nothing too bad, nothing too uh, worrisome for me uh, if I were to own this vehicle. You do get a park hold button right here, your electronic parking brake, and your traction control. You get forward and aft cup holders in this one, and then a center console that opens up to the side. It is rather long and deep and no power to speak up in here, but it is nice and felt lined. So anything you put in here won't be too loud. I can't show you the glove box because, well, there is none. So you just get this cloth material up here underneath because the real storage space is underneath the center console. That's where the very thick owner's manual is, and it resides on a layer of ultra suede perforated material as well. So whatever you put down here, also not gonna rattle. It's just unfortunate this owner's manual is just a little too thick for that opening right there, but you can see you can put uh, several things down there without much problem. 
and go ahead and put that bad boy right over there. Very thick, very heavy. These seats, oh my goodness, they are so nice. They are so amazing. The matching blue suede to that uh, blue, ice blue outside, it is so nice. This vehicle as a total package just works for me and even more so when you open the doors and get inside. The last really awesome feature I wanna call out before we move to the back seat is up above us. So we have a two pane glass roof up above us. And yes, it is hot, so we don't want sun pouring in. You can see it is nice and frosted right now but at the push of a single button, you can see the clouds and see the sky through it. It still has a light layer of frosting, so it is not just a completely clear sky view up above you, but just being able to push a button right here and block out all of that harsh sun is absolutely amazing. The only other vehicle that I know Toyota offers this in currently is the Toyota Vinza. So this is a very nice upscale option here in the Lexus RZ. And with that glass roof, me at 510, I've got plenty of room up here. This being an EV, the wheels are pushed out to the corners. So I've got a nice, comfortable ride position up here. Plenty of headroom up above me because that glass roof is directly above me. Very good all the way around up here. Allows me a very good sight line up front all around uh, to be able to see and pilot this vehicle. And I don't want to move to the back without talking about the gauge cluster right here. It is a fully digital gauge cluster. It does a little on the small side and very anti-glare, which kind of gives it a blurry appearance uh, to some, me being one of them. It just has a lack of crispness to it. You can change it with uh, each drive mode that you put it in. This is Eco, and here is Sport. Uh, goes red for Sport, but we'll put it back in normal before we go ahead and climb back to that back seat. Coming up to the back doors, much like the front, I showed you earlier, they are electronic opening, very easy to get into. The back seat customers or occupants are not forgotten about back here. We get that blue ultra suede on the doors, the cream uppers, the padded cream armrests. Here on the side, you get lock and unlock, as well as your window control. Very nice back here. And you do get three across seating back here as well full blue ultra suede seats back here. And this entire rear bench just has a 1970s couch vibe to it. It just seems like a place you wanna come and absolutely hang out. Getting in, closing the door behind you, you can see one of the huge benefits of EVs. I mentioned earlier, the wheels are pushed out to the corners because that is a design benefit of electric motors versus a gasoline powertrain. No center tunnel here, so you've got a relatively flat uh, floor back here with quite a bit of leg room for something in this size and price class. You can see we do have some blue suede up here, but then we get a synthetic leather material on the backs. We do get map pockets on both of the front seats back here, air vents for rear passengers, heated outboard seats, two USB-C ports for outboard passengers, and a 100 watt uh, power plug back here as well. So a well thought out back seat. And again, a very nice view of the skylight from back here. I'm just gonna go ahead and give it one more push to show you just how much light can come in back here with that opaque uh, level turned off. I do want to call out, we do have Tucker's Child Safety Seat installed here. If you want to see how easy it is to install, be sure and click that subscribe button and you'll see our family review later this week where I will do a full installation of that. We do have a fold down center armrest here with two cup holders in it. Just all the blue ultra suede in here is so nice to me. I love it so much. And I'll go ahead and call out full LED interior lighting in this as well. Simply tap on the light itself and it comes on very nice, very neat, and very upscale. But uh, let's hop back behind the steering wheel and see how this thing drives out on the road. All right, hopping back behind the steering wheel, buckling up, and just getting settled. Like I said, three-person memory seat in this one, so very comfortable. I didn't mention what this little section was here above the steering wheel, but those are actually infrared eyeballs watching back at me, even through my sunglasses, to make sure I'm paying attention. So uh, just 
Lexus is showing you, hey, we're watching you. We're making sure you're watching the road every once in a while. If you are not, you get a nice old beep beep warning telling you maybe you should pay attention to what you're doing. Before we leave this parking lot, I did want to show off uh, much like in the GV60 uh, that we tested, which runs a lot of the same hardware as the GV70. I want to show you what this thing is like to accelerate. Again, Lexus claims 0 to 60 in 5 seconds. Foot down all the way, and there we go! Oh my goodness, this thing is really quick. And uh, my nerves and this... Uh, parking lot are not quite big enough for me to do 0 to 60 and still stop comfortably in this vehicle. But again, EVs, I've said it for the longest time, they make excellent luxury vehicles. And this one is no exception. Because of the added weight of the batteries down low, down underneath me, this thing rides very well. And those wider tires actually do a really good job even though they cut down on overall range, they do a good job of the stability and just the planted nature of this vehicle. As you get out on regular roads, uneven pavement, just imperfect uh, driving situations, this is a really good package. And while that five second zero to 60 time is not the fastest in the game, its electric delivery is so instantaneous that it is better than a, a comparable gas vehicle that can do zero to 60 in five seconds flat because you don't have to wait for the transmission to shift and being all wheel drive and electric is a very repeatable option. So you can just do it over and over and over because you will always have traction at the front, at the rear, and it will always be instantaneous. So while buyers of this vehicle probably are not going to be drag racing their vehicles, it is nice to know that merging onto highways, getting out of somebody's way, general driving maneuvers can happen quickly if necessary in this and really makes for a very serene driving environment and a little bit bonkers if you want to. I will note, this thing does really lurch back uh, when you launch it. So again, it's not a drag race vehicle. It's really meant for people, well, of a certain age. And I am finding myself, the more I am in these electric vehicles, electric luxury vehicles in this class, I think I am of that certain age because like the Genesis GV70 Electrified that I've referenced already in this video, this vehicle definitely gives me those vibes. It just gives me chill, serene, calm vibes. And as much as I like the Ford F-150 Raptor R that we tested and jumped and had a lot of fun in, there's a lot to be said for this compact electric crossover class that is supremely luxurious. And this one kind of comes in at a bargain. That electric Genesis uh, GV70 or electrified GV70, I forgot to get the name right, slotted in at $75,000, which I would have specced mine perhaps a little bit differently. That one had that matte paint job on it that cost a little extra. But Genesis doesn't offer all their fun colors in their electrified GV70 like they do in their GV60. And the interior options on that one were cream or black. Again, limiting you from some of the color options like the navy and the red found in the gas version of that vehicle. Meanwhile, this Lexus RZ has this amazing ice blue exterior with its blue ultra suede interior that just has me gushing over it. Every time I look at that back seat, I just think of a 1970 Cadillac limo. It, it just, it feels old school classy. And that's why I've been listening to old school R&B the entire week that I've had this. It just gives you that calm, cool vibe that doesn't really jive with that very quick acceleration. But again, it's nice to know that quick acceleration is there if you need it. Otherwise, 
visibility out of this is very good. I already showed you the cameras. The cameras make it very good as well. You have blind spot monitoring on this. The beep you heard earlier was because I had my arm blocking the view of my eyeballs. This thing is helping make sure you are a good driver and that you don't hit anything and that nothing hits you. This does have adaptive cruise control with full stop and go capabilities. This really is a well-rounded package that given the electrified GV70's $75,000 price tag would really have me considering this lest the one major downfall of this one and that is that range. At 196 in perfect conditions, we are also testing a $99,000 Mercedes EQE electric sedan this week, and we're planning a trip to Dallas, well, tomorrow, and we really, really want to take this one because it is so nice to spend time in. But the 196 range on this one means we're going to be stuck at a charger and stuck at a charger for a length of time, which yes, I know we could go get lunch or something, but that also limits where we get lunch. Meanwhile, that uh, EQE has a 300 plus mile range and ultimately won out on our idea of what we're gonna take to Dallas this weekend. If you just want something for the city, for commuting, uh, for doing small trips, this absolutely would be a great car. This would be an excellent first electric vehicle because it is so luxurious and nice. And there are even some features like that creep when you let off the brake, but you aren't on the accelerator, it moves forward much like a gas car would. So it would be a very easy vehicle to get used to and adapt to uh, from a gas vehicle. And if you want some features like regenerative braking, these paddles on the back of the steering wheel do engage regenerative braking. It's not a full one pedal, but as I lift off, we do start slowing down. So it, it is your typical EV, but better, nicer, and more luxurious. So back to my question from the beginning of this review, is the first electric vehicle from the Lexus brand who has pledged to go all electric a home run or is it more of a swing and a miss? I would say this is a solid RBI double or a triple. This really is good on most fronts. This is an excellent solid effort and is clearly the best of the three vehicles built on this platform. So I would give this one a solid pass. Again, if you are not needing to travel long distances, if that range really isn't so much of a concern of yours, this is absolutely something to work at or, or to look at because it's $67,000 price tag as equipped does undercut that 75,000 of the electrified GV70. So as much as I love my Genesis and all of the products they've brought us so far, this Lexus really does kind of win me over. And on that note, if you want to see more from us, go find us on all social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube, Threads. Everything is at GT Garage Talk, or you can go to gtgaragetalk.com, where you can read more about this vehicle, some things I couldn't remember off the top of my head while driving in city traffic. Also, absolutely go check out our new GT Premium Reviews channel where you will truly see how absolutely luxurious this vehicle is for yourself on the inside. But as for me, in the 2023 Lexus RZ450e luxury, till next time, gearheads, bye. That is the 2023 Lexus RZ 450e in the pro oh crap premium luxury. What is it? Fully electric Lexus and tell you if the blah, 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 blah. Too wordy. In the premium trim, premium or luxury? I keep uh, luxury, luxury trim, luxury Lexus. RZ 450E in the luxury trim. Luxury, why do I keep going? Luxury, luxury, luxury. Why do I keep forgetting? Luxury, 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 luxury.
You turn test. Whee! <laughs> she quick. Uh, it's a good car. And I'm in normal mode right now. Uh, I, mm, I like it. I like it. I, if I were shopping mid Lux EVs, this one would high on my list. Very high. Perhaps the highest, especially spec, just like this one. The wheels, the paint, the interior. Mm. It it all does it for me. It's good. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes.